Welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome to episode 76. Glad to have you here. We're going to get these little sound issues figured out real quick. Had a weird thing with my internet, so I had to switch things around, and Streamlabs was not happy about it. So um, we should be good now. Um, again, welcome. We have a special guest today. Very, very excited to have Jiho with us today. Good to see you, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure to be here with you, fine gentlemen. Oh, thank you. Wow. Well, well stated. I, I really like the glasses, man. I, I, I appreciate that very much. So yeah, awesome. Um, we're getting scholarly Jiho today, which I appreciate. Enjoy. You look like you? you've been, you look like you've been, you know, peering over the SLP distribution charts. Um, I'm, do, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I uh, had to step out real quick to flip a baby before we got started, but I'm, uh, I'm back. I'm ready to chat. I know we got a lot of questions in the house for, uh, for Geo here today. A lot of people are excited. I know you've been doing uh, a few interviews recently, um, so we've had some updated, uh, I don't know, updated information, updated leaks from you recently, but uh, man, people still want their questions answered. So uh, happy to have you on here and happy to hopefully get down to the bottom of some of this stuff. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we, you know, we've been making the rounds, obviously, you know, there, there's a ton going on in the Axie universe, there's a ton of volatility, the people want answers. Um, but yeah, you know, it's to totally, totally makes sense that, you know, during these times of volatility, right, like we have to step up our communication. Um, so yeah, you know, super, super happy to be here. tonight. Excellent. Hey, let's get our disclaimer out of the way really quick. Everybody, um, I'm sure just absolutely loves 
here in our This discussion. content is for information on entertainment purposes only. You shouldn't construe any such information or material as legal, tax, investment, financial, or other advice. We have no responsibility for your decisions. Are not game devs, and our opinion could be flawed. Axie hard. Axie I think your hard. audio screwed up on that too. It did. <laughs> And or maybe I'm just muted. Anyways, you, yeah, you, man, actually yeah. hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Investment advice, all that. Anyways, on to the good stuff, huh? Yeah, yeah, on to the good stuff. So, yeah, welcome to the public stream. Just really quick, want to remind everybody about our All Access Pass. That is our membership feature. Um, the Q1 Pass is no more. Is that correct, Enjoy? Yeah. Well, after after tonight, I'm gonna cut it tomorrow morning. Um, give people one more day and. Yeah, the, the whatever's left over is getting burned, so that's pretty exciting. Yeah, awesome, awesome stuff. We still have the annual pass, so if you want to join us for the rest of the year, that's still an option. Um, but we're very, very excited today to have Jiho, the growth lead for Axie Infinity and co-founder of Axie Infinity um, and Sky Mavis here with us today. Um, I had a really good time stalking through um, your Twitter and LinkedIn and stuff, man. It, it was a good day today being able to, to check check out um, all things Jeff. Um, how are things going, man? Are, I'm sure it's kind of a stressful time in some ways. There's lots of people that are, you know, um, asking lots of questions and um, some, some, you know, really not helpful, overly critical mm -hmm. feedback. Um, I know we're, we're always excited about Axie, but we're also – you know, we're, we, I, I get really frustrated when people act like we're um, just always, uh, what is it, the paid actors or the, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the people who are always just uh, mindlessly. That's not the way we see it at all. Enjoy and I do our best to analyze these things very carefully from um, an economic standpoint and so forth. And so um, I, I know, though, that there are some, there are some um, both, I guess I would say positive critical people out there also a lot of really unhelpful negative critical people out there and i know a lot of that lands on your shoulders man uh th i mean thanks for thanks for that you know it's it's part of the job it's to be expected we're introducing people to web3 and crypto if right like we it's we're encountering a lot of our community are kind of encountering their first major kind of drawdown, their first volatility. So it's, it's totally to be expected, obviously, right? Like we are human. I am human. When people are saying mean things about you on the internet, like it, it can feel bad, but you have to have empathy um, and you have to continue to push forward and be productive, right? Like bottom line, we have not been winning as a nation, as a community recently and we need to get back to our winning ways so you know with that like i will agree right that you know think people people notice that right we're not performing at peak capacity and they want things to get better so i totally agree with that i think it's reasonable i think that we have to learn to be you know super construct constructive in our criticism and the way that we speak with, to each other, right? I'm okay with people attacking me, but I don't like it when people attack each other and attack uh, members of the Axie community. Like I'll right, put it all on me, but don't attack each other. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's totally understandable. So. Well, and I don't think there's any need for, for attacks either um, because it, I mean, you end up being the face of Axie Infinity and it's a great face. Uh, I, I think you're, you do a great job. It's not always easy. Um, you know, every now and then we get people even here in Axie chat, um, which is not, you know, affiliated with Sky Mavis or Axie Infinity, you know, saying things about, hey, fix this, do that, what, you know, <laughs> do things this way, do things that way. And, uh, you know, we don't have any control of that. I mean, I, you are the growth lead. You're not specifically a developer um, as well. So it can be a pretty, a pretty tough thing. But uh, I definitely appreciate your um, willingness to kind of take responsibility, but acknowledging also that it's not, it's not um, always things you can control. Um, I, I, no, but yeah, go ahead. You, you know, I, th I think some of that's really important though. You know, you, I think you, you acknowledge that we're not doing as well as we could be. And your position as a growth lead, I think in the past is kind of contradicted with, you know, taking that responsibility. Um, you know, you, 
growth lead, you kind of always want to hype things up. You always want to make, you want to point out the good stuff, right? Bring people, more people into the ecosystem. But I think sometimes people just want to hear that from someone who's affiliated with the team that, you know, we could be doing better. We could be doing this, this, and this, like, you know, what's next. Um, so I, I think that was big of you to, uh, to bring up. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, <clears throat> Hey, Jiho, Jeff, man, we love you. I, we could just sit here and talk about how much we, th we think of you, but let's, let's get into it. And, uh, um, you guys do. um let's get Aww. into it. Like, yeah, I, what's new in 2022? Um, you know, Enjoy and I, we put together Axie Chat so that we could talk about this stuff and we could try our best to bring all the Axie information um, to you. It feels like we've got a lot of kind of what I've called the Axie Fi or Game Fi, kind of the structural underpinnings of what's necessary for Axie Infinity to really be mm. successful pretty much in place now. I mean, even it's it's wild to think because we get one of these releases and it feels like it's been there forever. We literally did not have Ron um, released and in the wild last Axie chat episode. Um, so we're going to get a chance to talk about Ron um, or the Ronin token. Um, and that that's going to be awesome to talk about. But really, it's looking like what's new in 2022 is going to be, it sounds like, all about game game features it sounds like some economic um tinkering and and maybe um you know rectifying huh, sins of the past or however we want to, want to refer to it but those things also drove a lot of attention to axie infinity mm -hmm. in the space and so without um some of the things that have caused maybe what one could call um, some some hyperinflation in the SLP token. Um, they they definitely have pr provided a platform for Axie to launch off from as things kind of get resolved moving forward. Okay, so Ron um, gets released, <clears throat> and I, we have lots of stuff I think that we we do need to cover with respect to Ron. Um, what to you know yeah go ahead real real quick before we get into this because I'm, I'm already seeing some comments in chat like oh no not ron like we want to talk about slp um <laughs> you know and and you just made a good point right like last year was all about building out the infrastructure it was all about getting things ready um but there wasn't a whole lot of gameplay there wasn't a whole lot of economic balancing or you know the the balancing that was done it was um it was it was done carefully um but maybe not you know to the extreme that some people had, had wanted um Jiho, what do you what do you see in in Ron that like maybe or Ronan in general that um, would get the the average player excited about this? Maybe you know the person with three axes, or maybe the person who's renting the axes. Um, is is there anything that that is involved with this you know Ronan chain with the Ron token release that you know would get people excited? So one of our principles is that we want to make sure that our products are owned by our community members, right? So that's why with, right, the only way to actually get Ron so far has been, right, to farm it, either through the access token or the SLP SLP token. Um, so like, if you believe that Ronin is going to be the platform of choice for NFT game developers in the future, right, whether they be huge game studios with amazing IP, lots of awesome game development experience and an open mind towards Web3, or right, kind of an upstart, you know, maybe a little bit similar to Sky Mavis a couple of years ago, or an upstart game developer that's interested in experimenting, right? Like Ronin is built to be the platform of choice for these game developers. Why? Well, Sky Mavis and our community, we went through the process of actually building one of these things and getting it to a million users 2 million users, 3 million users before anybody else in the world hitting, right? Uh, I think we're, the, you know, we were the first to hit a billion dollars in total NFT volume, the first to hit 2 billion, and the first to hit 3 billion. We may be the first to hit 4 billion as well. So, right, like, we believe that when we look back, by giving the ability to actually get, you know, to farm this token with SLP, with access, right, to the community, this will go down as a transformational moment in the history of gaming and in the future of the internet, right? Like this is all about ownership. 
sharing ownership with our community that's doing uh, so much of the so much of the important work. So um, yeah, this you know this launch was for everybody. It was definitely quiet, a little bit quiet, you know, maybe due to the market, maybe due to some of the sentiment around Axie and you know our potential. Um, but you know that that's that reminds me of Axis, right? I think Alex says yeah. that said that as well, right? The Axis launch was super quiet. We had people yelling at us. Saying what the <laughs> most most Bi most Binance IEOs go up seven x on the day, right? Maybe even you know, yeah. Or, yeah, uh, I remember all those. A comments. lot of people, you know, right? Like it was just quiet. But that's how we do things. We just execute, right? And I can't promise that, right? It's going to be a similar opportunity to Axis, but like you know, this was about sharing the vision with the community, right? Like we have the light paper. I recommend that everyone check it out. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I think it will. People will look back on it as a momentous and an important moment for the community. And yeah, if if you are right, like just you know, someone with three axes or whatever, right? Like, like this is also about right. Like, we definitely right have over relied too much on you know the scholarship model, the SLP model, uh, you know, over the last year. Uh, but the awesome part about being one of our community members, right, is you don't just, it's not just about SLP. It's about, right, like getting access and having the ability to be some of the first people in the world to find out about Ron, to be able to get Ron, uh, you know, to get access, right? So you can become an owner of Axie. You can become a ro owner of the, Ron the Ronin chain. Um, and I think, you know, this is really, really unprecedented, unprecedented stuff. Yeah, and I mean, Ron is now, uh, and there there is a free transaction system for it, which is very, very useful for people who have Axies, so they will get uh, the ability to continue to use the Ron um, chain, the Ronin chain, so they can claim uh, rewards and, um, you know, do transactions um, with the DEX and so forth, um, having some of those free transactions. But also, you know, transactions on Ron are, are costing really small portions of Ron itself. I, I've always, I kind of wanted to talk about Ron in terms of mm -hmm. kind of what you, what you kind of mentioned there, Jeff, and that is, are people maybe missing the boat a little bit with the total scope and what Ron really represents and, and can do? I kind of feel like that a little bit. Um, it's not really about necessarily how many transactions a single Ron can put through the system. That's important. Don't, don't get me wrong. That, that is part of um, the valuation process but it's really a vote in a way as to I mean what we had what we see here this is Ron Ronan is the second most volume um, chain here on on the list it, it just is used the second most as in terms of um, volume um, um, buyers transactions sellers total and I mean that's just an incredible thing um, and, and I feel like that that is going to um, translate into other games within both the Axie Infinity mm -hmm. universe and outside of the Axie Infinity universe. And I, I just, I'm really excited about the Ronin chain. I think it's sure. uh, a great, I think it's a great launch. I feel like Sky Mavis has knocked it out of the park on um, the kind of finance sides of things or the DeFi-like things, the GameFi, whatever you want to call it. And uh, yeah, I'm just excited to see them continue to knock it out of the park. And you know, we're we're gonna ask some tough questions. We'll see what you can and can't answer. Um, but I I feel like it was important to to acknowledge right off the bat, um, we had a great release just in the last week. <laughs> there was a time when we were just hoping for any release um, for mm. months, and and we're getting pretty constant information regularly. Yeah, there is a um, you know, there's a giant elephant in the room and, and we'll talk about it, but before we move on, one thing I wanted to, to make sure that I ask is a few people were asking is kind of like the single sided staking. So you guys have great information, in the light paper, um, great information about what happens until February 3rd. And then what happens from there forward for the end of the year. Um, are we going to see single sided staking this designated proof of stake? coming fairly soon or is that something um, you can comment on or where are things at well this is why we use phases baroner <laughs> it's gonna be in phase two <laughs> um it you know it, 
we'll, we as we get closer and as we uh you know yeah as we get closer to it like we we can definitely provide more guidance i think right single-sided staking is super important like one thing that i want to do is like i want to back back up a little bit right like the future ronin is going to be successful if it becomes the nft gaming chain of choice and it continues to be the most used nft scaling solution i say continues because right now it is right um hist historically that's been the case if we continue to be the nft gaming chain with the most users with the best community then the best game developers are going to want to come to ronin and that's going to right like create immense value for the chain uh, I, I heard some people, right, like before you guys ask about this, right, I, I heard some people saying, oh, like there's so many free transactions, not that much RON is being, right, like spent per day. There's no reason to use RON, right? Like RON is not going to be successful by, right, nickel and diming <laughs> our community in the first, you know, couple days and, and weeks of launch, right? Like we wanted to make sure that, right, Ronin continued to be stable, continued to be, right, super user friendly during this transition period, as everyone is still getting a chance to get Ron into their accounts, into the accounts of their scholars. Um, so uh, yeah, I, you know, I think that's really important because I saw some people saying, oh, like, right, like talking about the free transaction thing as a negative. Um, the, the whole point of that was, right, like we said that it will get scaled down. We can discuss with the community scaling it down much quick, you know, more quickly than, than we thought. But the whole idea there was to, right, like, have a very smooth transition into the ron uh token era so um, hey, that yeah. made a lot of sense because i mean initially ronan was talked about as being something that people could use for free that it wasn't going to cost in order to be on that chain and so i think you guys struck a really good balance there in in trying to follow through with some of the earlier statements um not necessarily mm -hmm. commitments but descriptions um oh. and, and so i felt like there was a really good balance there and i'm looking forward to seeing how it goes forward and you know i it feels like the community is getting more and more input and involvement in how things go forward and and you know i think feedback with respect to free transactions and the approach you guys are taking about it taking uh, um with respect to the free transaction issue i guess is a positive and and i'm looking forward to seeing more and more um discussion back and forth and um hopefully all together like it says right there on this slide, building together, um, not only games, not only experiences, but also um, ideas, thought crafting, um, making sure that we're all on the same page and we're all building something we're going to be excited about using for decades to come. Um, that's that's what gets me excited. Um, <clears throat> all right. Enjoy more on Ron. Uh, no, not on Ron, but I did, I did want to touch on something you just said, um, which is that there's been a lot of ideas being shared, and it does seem like Sky Mavis, the Axie team, has been a lot more receptive to some of those ideas recently, and and uh, also more open to sharing information. Like I feel like, as Bernard mentioned last year, we would go months without any real updates um, or or anything you know uh, official, um, and this year we're getting you know almost biweekly updates, and and there's a lot more um, conversation around some of these these ideas, um, whether it's around SLP or, um, you know, these round transactions, et cetera. Um, you know, what's, what's, I guess, initiated some of this, this change? Is this just the, um, the natural progression towards this community ownership, or is this have to do somewhat with that hiring last year, um, taking a little bit more of the load off your, your chest? What, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a combination, right? Like it's definitely us getting better as a team learning from the community more about what you guys want to learn about and then also yeah like you know to, to be honest guys like during the fall it was really difficult for me because i was traveling right i was trying to meet like you know axie community members all you know obviously i hung out with you guys a bunch trying to meet axie community members go to these conferences and you know be a public face but also onboarding team members at the same time right and stuff was maybe in some ways breaking down uh but right like we got through that Right now, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, and now we, I have the team members that, right, they're onboarded now. They've been trained. 
uh, people like syntax, um, right? Uh, Shade. People Quinn. like Quinn, right? <laughs> Quinn, Zuri. right? Like uh, on last Zuri, week, yeah. Zuri, right? They're start, they've they've really scaled up, right? Like Mike right, uh, Trung Trung actually told me, right? Like uh, that, right? Like uh, team members are like investments, right? Like at the beginning, right? Like you put your they're actually a net time sink, right? You're putting a lot of your time and effort into getting them up to speed, and their output is going to be a little bit like muted, right? Because uh, they don't want you don't want people who right just joined the team to be doing us a lot, right? Stuff could go wrong. <laughs> Um, but then, right, as, as they get onboarded, right, their, their capacity, right, starts to go exponential, your team's capacity starts to go exponential. So that's, I think, like, a lot of the communication has been us getting to where we want to be due to the hiring that we made, right, in the second half of, of last year. Um, and yeah, I, th I think it's also just the community is maturing, right? You guys push us, right? Like, there is an osmosis, right? Like, you guys do awesome stuff give great feedback, and then we say, hey, you guys are ready to be more involved um, in, in certain things, right? So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a give and take, it's, it, it's, it's pushback. So um, you guys have been really definitely impressing me um, recently, so. Oh, awesome. <laughs> All right, let's I was, see. I feel like there are two parts to that question, right? Uh, does that mean, so, so it was like, is it, is it, so is it, it was, was it us scaling our team and then also like, yeah, I think it was a, a, a com, you know combination of right. We have more people on the team, right? Identifying things that the community wants, right? Because I can't be on you know on all the forums talking to all of you guys all the time uh, anymore, unfortunately, right? Like, uh, so we have you know more eyes and ears out in the community and more feedback, right. and then we can use that to b better inform you guys, right? Like the whole process around the development update totally been revolutionized. Uh, you know, I, th I think since November or December, if you take a look, you'll see like there's a night and day difference in terms of like the development updates. We want to share more, right? Like we Which, understand oh, that. Oh yeah. Which, by the way, I think we're still waiting for our November development update. So. <laughs> I, th I think <laughs> whenever you like find that, that on your hard drive. There was one month in there that we missed it. Right? <laughs> and there were a few things going on. Yeah, I I love that, and it feels like. Um, and from my perspective, the hires are very high quality hires, um, taking things very seriously. And, you know, I think, you know, there's always the the worry that more hands in some ways just means more oversight. Um, but from my perspective, you know, the Mike, the Quinn, the the Shade, the, the Syntax, um, Green Ranger coming on. Um, they're doing, they just, they seem to hit the ground running and have a really good, um, aligned plan with the rest of the team to get things done. And I'm really, really excited to see what happens here, here quickly. Um, before we delve too much further into it, I, we had these great things happen and I really wanted to get your input on some of these things before we, mm -hmm. um, just start grilling you with, with questions. Um, the builders program incredible response i think i heard somewhere 1300 applications already i've heard that some of these things that are being developed they haven't even applied they're just kind of building them with the idea that uh, maybe it will maybe they can reach some um some agreement i guess with sky mavis and axie infinity to have them happen but so we've got we've got 1,300 applications plus other people that are trying to develop things. I think it's like 1,800 now. 1,800 now. I think we I think we've we've gone through like I think we we actually went through them all now. Um, so. Wow, so cool! Like, what are you seeing? Um, a couple of examples of people putting some. Um, it looks like gameplay. I don't see how it's not gameplay um, with mobas, and then we saw this uh, this kind of like uh axio cart <laughs> um and i mean this is just kind of the beginning though too um but these look pretty high quality right out of the gates right yeah i mean we're we're super we're super encouraged by what we're seeing in terms of the applications there are some really uh, there's even some game studios like professional game studios that have submitted and applied to the to the builders program and then obviously there are amazing like community members uh, who love Axie and uh, they want to help, right? So yeah, like 
So one, one thing that I want to say, and that's been uh, kind of percolating in my mind over the last couple of days is Axie is becoming a platform in the same way that Ethereum is a platform, which means that Axies are going to find use cases that we're not Right, they're gonna constantly find new use cases, new narratives, right? Just like Ethereum was used, right? Like in 2017, 2018, Ethereum was all about ICOs, right? ICOs, yep. And then, right, like that was good, but it also had some negative consequences. And, you know, there was a huge hangover from that. And then we had DeFi and then we had NFTs, right? I think that we're going to see Axie develop as a platform where, right, in the early days, it was like, around, you know, around the collectibles um, and, you know, some battles. And then, right, like we saw like the rise of the scholarship system and, um, and that. And then, right, now we're starting to see Axie emerge as a platform for, you know, anyone, anywhere to build a game um, with, right, like uh, a community that's interested in playing that game, right? Uh, and then, right, like we're starting to see also like the esports and the competitive gaming narrative emerge and the use that use case. So Axie really is right. That's why we call it Axie Infinity because there are infinite games and types of experiences and use cases that can be built into these assets by the pure nature of how they exist and the fact that you actually own them. Um, so yeah, I, th I think it's really important. Like I, I think, right, like try to zoom out and like, you know, understand that like, this is a long-term project. This is something where we don't know. And so you, sometimes you have to embrace that, right? Like we don't know what all the use cases of axes are going to be over the next 10 or 15 years to say that we do. And to say that we know exactly how things are going to happen, right? It might calm people down in the short term, calm their nerves, but that would actually be arrogant, right? Because this project is bigger than any of us. Um, we need to let it breathe in some cases and discover its potential because it might be much larger than any of us could ever uh, even think. So right, we can't be so arrogant as to believe that we understand exactly how things are going to play out. I absolutely agree. Absolutely love it. A slide that I've had up almost um, every time for, for almost, I think, two months is the one where it talks about axes being the key that unlocks experiences within Axie Infinity. I think that's more true than ever. And, you know, with some of these potential games, um, right now it takes three axes in order to engage. My understanding is that with Origin, it's going to require a team of three axes. Still, I believe, um, we don't know for sure yet, but I think that that's what it will be. Um, but some of these little side games look like maybe, you know, 1v1 Axie type of thing, but you're going to have to have an Axie, it looks to me like, um, in, in order to unlock the key to be able to experience those those different games and so forth. So Axies are the key. And, you know, I, we've had people complaining about Axie prices for a long time, but right now there are some awesome Axies for 28 bucks out there on the marketplace. So um, it, it's interesting. That's how it happens. That has to, that's how it happens, right? Like, I think people get overly excited, right? Things get a little bit crazy. You have the hangover, then a new generation arises, right? Yep. You like, can we really, right? Could we have really, right? Like onboarded, uh, you know, the people that we needed to onboard into the community with axes 500, it was like 400 or $500 each, right? Like, um, it doesn't really, that didn't really, it didn't really make sense to be honest, right? So, you know, there's always a hangover after periods of euphoria. This summer was crazy, I'm sure, right? Like people know that this was an insane summer, right? Like probably the craziest summer of our lives. Um, it can't always be like that, right? It feels great. We're winning, right? We're dominating. Like I, that's what I live for. Um, but sometimes we need a refractory period and we need to, right? We need to have things come back down to earth so that we can rise again with, an, with a new generation that takes advantage of that as an opportunity. Yeah, people talking about the Big Yak Society, man, and Chad. I, I'm, I, I've always loved Big Yaks. I, fuzzies, wet dogs, Big Yaks. I mean, that's partially because I 
uh, scrutinize the land items, you know, because and I like Arctic land too. Um, but yeah, I love Big Yaks. Uh, it's kind of fun, right? Big Yak Society. I guess we'll see if that takes off. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I don't know how I got dragged into that. Uh, I was an Axie Economy channel. There's someone named Creator. I think that summoned me. I don't know. It's becoming kind of like a meme. Uh, I'm not sure. It's like I stepped into a dream world somehow. Like I felt my hands going towards my laptop, and somehow, for some reason, buying a big yak reptile. Um, and then I, you know, I did the I did the Discord. It's kind of like a stage or the voice chat. I think we're yep. gonna, you know, we're gonna do more of those. That was a lot of fun. So. I love it. I remember being in some of those uh, voice chats um, with several different releases and, and just, just different discussions. I mean, there was a time when I remember Alex just decided to pop into a voice chat out of the blue, and um, it was it was a lot of fun. So, yeah, the more you can do some of that stuff, uh, the better. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So this is kind of linked with the discussion around SLP. Um, but what can you tell us about origin? I think you said something about maybe quarter one, if I remember right, um, from, from your interview with Dave, um, is that really, is that what, what you're looking at? Is that semi firm right. or? All right. So let me, let's, let's discuss like how this came about. I want to give the guidance properly. Yeah. Right. So, you know, we talked to the origin team and they, you know, they mentioned, right. They said, okay. in the, in the update, right. Okay. We're, we're looking for, uh, a target alpha test launch, right. Kind of like a soft launch in the upcoming months. Um, right. So that's kind of right. Like months, right. Upcoming months, kind of like, right. Like, you know, a cu couple of months. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, and then, you know, I, I did a little bit of digging internally and yeah, like, you know, like. So we have an internal target, maybe, yeah. you know, it's going to be soft guidance that we would like to release it, um, in Q1. That's um, awesome. So, so that's, that's our target. I'm going to be honest. It's, it's not a hundred percent that we're going to hit it. Um, right. Like, but that's also part of the, that's part of the process where we, if we want to share more, we also have to write, like give appropriate disclosures that, Hey, like we would love to do that. That's what we're pushing ourselves towards um but you know it's it, i'm not going to say that it's 100 percent. yeah um, and i you know there, i there love things... that so much yeah. i sorry okay. to jump in but i i love that approach so much like we're hoping to get it out by the by quarter one like i think that gives people a lot of um excitement um to know that there's kind of a a time frame that you're shooting for but i think people also understand that you know it, there are things that happen development things happen everybody's been aware of things that have got delayed not just in axie in life um because of mm -hmm. things that that happen but i do feel like that's great because it kind of helps people set expectations and again i think you mentioned it's kind of an alpha or almost not i well it, what do you what do you guys if if you were able to hit that target what would be what would we be looking yeah, I, at I guess we, would call it a, we would call it a soft launch So I got to uh, I, I got to step in and, and do my part to wipe away Baronar's cheery exterior real quick because I'm getting hammered in Discord about SLP and I'm gonna have to uh, I I think I'm gonna have to to adjust every single one of these questions back to SLP. But the question that's coming in is, um, do we see any economic updates? Like I, I think that the assumption is that a lot of the current problems with the economy are going to be addressed in in origin and and maybe you can maybe you can touch on that a little bit um part two of the question though is do you expect you know if, if origin gets pushed out another month or two um do you expect to see any economic updates in the current battle system prior to that so i'm, I'm trying to figure out how to tackle this so in terms of the right, so the way that we've always thought about adding axie progression, axie vertical progression, right? Upgrading your axie, right? It's maybe it's cosmetics or ac upgrading its body parts. We've always thought about that as we will do that when the game is ready for mass adoption and mainstream adoption. Um, that was our guidance and that was our framework around that. 
So, right, like we would not add additional, right, like the burning mechanisms that are going to work, that are going to uh, help balance the economy are going to be around, right, predominantly, right, like vertical progression of your axes. Um, that's the thing that when we survey people, that's the number one thing that they ask for. Um, so we're not going to add that to the current battles because we don't think that the current battle system is good enough for mainstream adoption. And that's why we decided to build Axie Infinity Origin. So the, right, the vertical progression, which will right, like do be where the brunt of the new burning mechanisms come from, that will be right, with an origin. Um, and right, like we want that to be implemented into origin as soon as possible. Uh, we want to be able to give right, like a roadmap. Um, so like the idea and the, what I talked about with the game team today is right, like when origin soft launch comes out, we should try to have a game centric roadmap just for origin that talks about what's coming out in the upcoming months um, after the soft launch, right? Yeah. So our idea is we're gonna go with the soft launch and then iterate and add features to it continuously and quickly. It's not gonna be like the current thing, right? The current system has been hamstrung and it's been in a freezer for almost, right, basically almost years because we've been working on Axie Infinity Origin, right? Yeah, more than so two rather years. than adding awesome stuff to the current system, we've been saying, hey, that's great for Origin. That's a good idea for Origin. Let's build that for Origin. Let's start building that for Origin. So it's created a weird, a weird thing. Like, it, has it been perfect? No. Like, it's caused actually a lot of headache for me and a lot of pain maybe for some of the community, right, to be in that awkward phase. But that's the decision. That's the path that we went on. Why? Because we believe that Origin is going to massively increase our potential and, uh, and increase our ceiling. So it's not perfect, but that's, that's basically how, you know, how we've done that. So in terms of right, adjusting the current, the current battles, so right, like we know that adding current new burn mechanisms, that's going to be centered around origin. So what can we do as we wait for origin, right? Well, we know that basically economic balancing, right, is around making sure that the, right, the amount of SLP, for example, and the amount of, uh, and the amount of SLP that's being burned and the amount of SLP that's being issued per day is relatively balanced, right? It's okay for us to have you know, imbalances as well sometimes, right? Because right, we also want more axes, we're expecting like future growth. But definitely it's gotten out of hand over the last couple of months. A change is needed. We need to get it under control aggressively. Um, so so I, I'm gonna right. set you up real quick for a further discussion about that, okay? so. Enjoy mm -hmm. couldn't hold on for just a second longer till we got to the next slide. That's all about mm -hmm. SLP and, and these issues. But really, you have two ultimate choices, right? You can throttle emissions on the front end, or you can introduce burning mechanisms that it kind of sounds like make way more sense to hold off um, until we get origin released into a state where, you know, those burning mechanisms can be used for vertical progression in a game that we all want to play for, you know, a longer period of time to come. That's going to be constantly updated with new features and new, you know, uh, I think again, like in terms of Clash Royale or other games like that, where, you know, they constantly are introducing, introducing kind of new characters and cards and stuff. And to me, that makes absolute sense. I'm, I'm hoping that origin, kind of goes um, that sort of path with maybe new, you know, we already kind of have an idea that there'll be eyes and ears and so forth like that. Um, but yeah, so in, in that sense, the real hard questions, like we, with where things are at, like I was looking today, um, just today, um, I guess it was technically yesterday, there was almost, I think it was a little bit more than half a billion SLP that was minted today. Um, so again, um, <laughs> you have the two choices. We're kind of in a holding pattern for origin. Um, 
you, you mentioned the economic changes that are coming are going to be tough love, tough medicine for the community economy. Economy. Um, can you tell us what you're talking about? Are there changes that are coming soon? Um, what What are you What are you okay. thinking? Well, well, first, right, like I'll say is right, like we put out the you know the developer update. So the develop the dev journal around like thinking around economic balancing, right? Um, and we we discussed a couple of options there, right? Like basically rebalancing the rewards, getting rid of a lot of emission, um, right? Ch you know, changing the breeding fee, uh, right? And we also asked for feedback from the community, right? Um, and we saw a lot, you know a lot of community members really step up and and propose some really really well balanced ideas around how to basically stop the bleeding, so that we can uh, right turn the economy around in, in the coming months, especially right as we lead up to the to the launch of, of Origin. So yeah, like, you know, right now, more like around half of all SLP is being minted uh, from adventure and the daily quest, right? A lot of this is right, like we want, what are the types of behavior that we want to be rewarding in our ecosystem is right. We want to re reward skilled gameplay. We want to reward gameplay that's making the game more fun, if that makes sense, right? Like when people queue for PVP, they're making the game more fun, right? Like when I, when we, when I started, when I used to play Axie a lot, in the early days, I used to have to play because there weren't enough people playing, right? So I would be, you know, I would I would be queuing to provide liquidity so that, you know, someone else could have fun by playing the game by matching up against me, right? So when you provide, when you queue for the arena, right, the more people that queue for the arena, the faster matches people get and the more, and uh, right, the more likelihood they're playing against someone at their skill level. That's providing real value for the ecosystem because that's making the game more fun. That's not the case, unfortunately, when you're playing against where you're doing adventure mode day after day, just doing that over and over and over again. I would love to live in a world where anyone could, you know, just farm that day after day and make a living. But unfortunately, right, that's not it just goes against the laws of the well, universe. Well, I mean, if you're just clicking level one 50 times and getting rewarded 50 SLP, it doesn't really feel to me like you're doing anything creative, intelligent. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just kind of like pushing a button, right? Um, yeah, I mean, the thing, right? Like it, like I, I will say, like adventure. Some people love adventure, and yeah, some people I like, like uh, uh, PVE. But right, like we can't really. It's it's just very very difficult to reward that kind of behavior in, in this new paradigm in this new type of a game, uh, right? So it's is like what what type of adventure mode would it? Let's let's think about like what type of adventure mode would it be possible to reward? You know, let's say potentially in the future, something like Slay the Spire, where right people they do runs, they progress, right? Like you, it's you can, challenging, you harder, as harder. far as possible before you die. And then there's a leaderboard. And then that leaderboard, just like with the Axis leaderboard, has set emissions, right? So that we know that it's kind of under under control. We know exactly how much the budget is for that game mode per uh period, SLP right? that's the type of that's the type of adventure mode that we could actually reward sustainably uh in the long run the current system unfortunately it doesn't work it was nice as a like promotional activity to get the game going and to you know get people into the community and and help the ecosystem grow but it's 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 like a it's it's just not it's just not sustainable so yeah like you know we should be prepared for a really tough medicine the patient is sick need to be the doctor in this case as stewards of the economy sometimes you have to go through chemotherapy to root out the cancer um and unfortunately right we've gotten into this position right like this whole right like adventure mode the daily quests were really great and they've helped us get to where we are but in order for us to get to the next level we're going to have to make some hard decisions uh so yeah we're looking to roll out some changes that will reduce issuance very drastically to get it back in line with burning with the rollout of season 20. And I also want to announce the changes prior to the release of season 20. Why? Because I think it's better to right, just like, you know, the Fed, 
right? You want to start forecasting economics yeah, exactly. in advance. That's also why I'm here, right? That's why also why, for example, you know, I retweet certain ideas that I think, you know, make sense, right? Because I'm, 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 we're forecasting to the market, to the community, what types of ideas we think, right, are needed so that, right, like they start to prepare themselves mentally and what, ha what have you. Um, so, yeah. I, I think that's okay. I well, we're I wanted to say. we're before that, and we're we're open to you um, letting us know what uh, what what you have in mind if you want to if you want to. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think, I, think right, right, I think as I, I think as I mentioned, right, like uh, right. So right now, like on a on a given day, right, like let's say there's uh, two, you know, two hundred. 283 million SLP uh, being created on a given day, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's around like 130 million of that is coming from PVE. Crazy. 107 million of that is coming from PVP. 45 million of that is coming from the daily quest, right? And, right, like burn is only around 40 million, right? So the daily quest alone is creating more SLP than is actually in demand by the economy. Right, and that's just clicking a button. So, yeah, exactly. So, right, like we have to, we if we have to get these numbers closer to forty million, we have to get mint closer to forty million per day if we're gonna stop the bleeding in the economy and right the ship. So, right, like where does that leave us? Right, well, we don't really want to touch PVP because that is the behavior that we like to see. That is making the in game battles, more fun. For sure. Yep. Right. So where does that leave us, right? Like we're, we're looking at, you know, we have to look at the daily quests. We have to look at the adventure mode. And yeah, I guess like, you know, that, that's, that's what I'll say, right? I think, I think it, uh, it's pretty, yep. pretty clear. Sounds pretty clear. Um, people are asking in chat, I think it's a fair question. Do you have a time frame for season 20 um, and for maybe some of these throttling mm -hmm. measures to go into place? So... I'm, we're still con confirming with the engineers how some how long some of these changes will take. Um, therefore, yeah, it, it's you know it's 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 soon, right? Like uh, right. It, weeks but, as opposed to months. Yeah, yeah, it's it's days it's not as opposed. Months. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> days as opposed to weeks. Right after we're confirming, we're, confirming with, we're confirming with the engineers on right, like you know, if, on how smooth these changes will be. So there are some things that we're thinking about that wouldn't require that wouldn't be just changing a number in the back end. There are and a lot of a lot of the changes, a lot of things that we're considering are obviously just changing a number in the back end. So yeah. And um, since we're talking about season 20, um, just wanted to point out I didn't put the whole article here, just kind of put it in the background about the balancing updates. Love the ideas with Dawn and, and some of some of those um, changes. Going to be really interesting to see how this season progresses with some of those changes. So uh, you guys are always thinking, I, I really, really like it. Um, but the answer to um, the, <laughs> the question on our Twitter, I'm not going to even um, say the, the handle, but burning, the burning <laughs> mechanisms, I mean, we already have one. I'll switch the slide here. Um, and I'd love to hear your thoughts about the Lunar New Year. I really think that this was awesome. Uh, somebody in chat mm -hmm. said we actually – went over a hundred thousand um released axes as we've been mm -hmm. talking which is really cool um but uh season 20 it just seems like things are going pretty well and and i like this uh kind of buffer period that you have where you're mm -hmm. able to get feedback and see how things are going with some of the changes how do you feel about it do you feel like season 20 is gonna be our best season ever we're getting better, right? Like our processes are becoming smoother. They're becoming better defined because we have more personnel that are able to execute these things and have done them in pro professional environments uh, in the real world. So things are things are getting better, but right, they're getting better gradually. They're getting better one percent per day, which is kind of like where one of my mottos. Uh, but sometimes, right, when there's a lot of volatility, people want more than one percent per day. I can try to do that. We're going to try to do that. We're always going to push as hard as possible. Um, so, yeah, I, I can see things that are getting better, but also, right, like, I'm not satisfied, right? Like, we're, we have not been dominating 
uh right i have a killer instinct like and that's that's also i think like how how we look how we live at sky mavis I, I hope to think that that's how the axie community thinks and that's also why i think you guys have such high standards uh for our performance right because we are number one and people don't like to see the data start to slip i don't like to see it right like there's i don't think that there there's anybody that wants to win more than me uh right like i so right like we we have incredibly high standards for ourselves and yeah like you know i i like people think oh like oh like the community blah blah, blah like all oh, everything must be so hard right like i don't like i'm i the thing that that the thing that right like the thing that i have to live with is my voice and in my inside my own head telling me that we're not performing to our best right like a lot of the other stuff is just noise right like when my when you know people within the community that i really love you know they come to me with concerns i'm obviously gonna gonna take take it into account but um right like we ha we're self we have to be self-motivated um and that goes for everyone in the community right like we have to be our own toughest critics so um yeah things are things are, things are getting better you know things are our processes are, are becoming smoother uh but yeah we we definitely have to push harder so so what does that killer instinct tell you uh in order to get us back on top where's the blood in the water i think it, it i think it, a lot of it is around the execution on origin uh adding you know uh adding the you know the head onto the transformer in terms of the economy where we're making it right adding that sustainable economic model by introducing an amazing crafting system, upgrading system that people are super interested in participating in. Well, I, I think I think I think that's I think that I think that's a lot of where we need to uh, need to, need to deliver. And I think a lot of it is just on yeah, continuing to educate. You know, becoming more transparent, um, repeating things over and over again. Uh, yeah, making sure that yeah, like the community understands why we're here. Um, I think you know I, we're on the we're we're on the path to that happening, but we can't be. Yeah, I mean we we can't we we can never be satisfied. So um, the the stakes are super high. You know there there is a there are a lot of things that can go really right this year. There are also some things that could go really wrong, right? So like we have to be on our A game. Hey, I have a question about those little power ups that we saw. Those little icons. Is there anything you can tell us about those? Are those are those just direct burn, or um, is there going to be new mechanics involved as far as like crafting or that, or is that are these questions um, not not ones that really can be answered yet? I mean, I love those little icons; they look freaking mm -hmm. awesome. The little turtle shell. I'm going to switch us back to those. Yeah, the little turtle, the little like claw thing, the mm -hmm. the sun rays, or I. I the recycle little I, these look really really awesome um it, kind of like a beans blessing kind of thing i think is mm. is what one of them is but uh all right so, so i'm gonna say two things one is i think that you craft them um and i think that yeah they are tied to like a burn mechanism and i think that they are blockchain items number two oh. the fact that i'm not like you know I, i'm kind of tiptoeing and i'm not like 100 percent sure also like shows that right like we need somebody, one of the things that we've been talking about is, right, like, yeah, I'm more on, like, the growth <laughs> growth yeah. side of things, right? I do a lot of the economy, so I think I can speak pretty authoritatively on the economy. When it comes to, like, the game design and the game product, um, right, like, so I think Alex uh, leaked earlier in an interview a couple days ago that, right, we just made a really key hire, someone from Niantic, right? Like, Niantic is, are, the, are the creators of Pokemon Go. This guy is a superstar. Uh, he knows a lot about games. Yeah, and he's a great, he's that's also, awesome. He's sorry, that's so cool. I, I keep going, man. I'm sorry, but that's that's incredible. So, so one of the things that I, you know, I really want to draw him into is right, like helping to communicate right more directly from the game team, right, rather than the growth team, the community team, right, uh, for, directly from the game team to the community. Um, I think that is right. Rather than having to play telephone, like we need someone from the game team kind of speaking directly to you guys um, and coordinating that flow of information. I think that's something that we could do a lot better with. And the good news is, yeah, I think, you know, it's going to get a lot better this year. 
uh, the right, like we talk about like why was this so like 